Dear America. Dear America. Dear America. 150 years ago, we made a promise that the beautiful citizens of the Navajo Nation would be cared for the same way all Americans are. To give the first people of this land the respect and dignity we have owed them for a long time. Now is the time to make good on our promises. Navajo Nation, my nation, is a third hotspot in the United States. There are just over 175,000 people living on the reservation, 30% without running water. We're in need of test kits, medicines, personal protective equipment, including masks, gowns, and face shields. And now, medical staff. The danger is this. Our elders are at the greatest risk, the keepers of our stories, language, and culture. We have to protect our elders. We are resilient. We are survivors. We can beat this. Please go to protect the sacred. Protect the sacred. Protect the sacred. Protect the sacred. Net and donate if you can. We ask all allies of the Navajo people to help us. Do you hear us? We hear you. We hear you. We see you. We see you. We see you. We see your resilience. We believe in you. We believe in you. We love you. We love you. We love you. The force is strong with the Navajo. Navajo strong. Navajo strong. Navajo strong. Navajo strong. Navajo strong. Navajo strong. Nebitzi. Navajo strong. Navajo strong. The Nebitzi. The force is strong. Dear America. Dear America. Dear America. 150 years ago, we made a promise that the beautiful citizens of the Navajo Nation would be cared for the same way all Americans are. To give the first people of this land the respect and dignity we have owed them for a long time. Now is the time to make good on our promises. Navajo Nation, my nation, is a third hotspot in the United States. There are just over 175,000 people living on the reservation, 30% without running water. We're in need of test kits, medicines, personal protective equipment, including masks, gowns, and face shields. And now, medical staff. The danger is this. Our elders are at the greatest risk, the keepers of our stories, language, and culture. We have to protect our elders. We are resilient. We are survivors. We can beat this. Please go to protect the sacred. Protect the sacred. Protect the sacred. Protect the sacred. Net and donate if you can. We ask all allies of the Navajo people to help us. Do you hear us? We hear you. We hear you. We see you. We see you. 
We see you. We see your resilience. We believe in you. We believe in you. We love you. We love you. We love you. The force is strong with the Navajo. Navajo strong. 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 Nebitzi. Navajo strong. Navajo strong. The Nebitzi. The force is strong with the Navajo. Good afternoon, everybody. This is uh, President Jonathan Nez uh, coming to you from Pinyon, Arizona. We are at the Zilyajin Judicial District. Um, facility here and uh, we have some great hosts hostess here Arlene Lee who's our court administrator and Marietta Lee the, the clerk here for the Zilyajin Judicial District Madam uh, Chief Justice uh, I want to say thank you for allowing us to uh, have uh, this time here in this facility so that we can um, give our town hall updates. You know, as you all know, it's um, windy outside. We were gonna do it outside, but uh, it's blowing. And we started out this morning in Low Mountain, Jetez, ah, and just recently wrapped up at uh, Whippoorwill chapter, and we'll be on our way to Blue Gap Touchy chapter, and uh, finish off the day in Naslini uh, Cottonwood chapter. Uh, I want to also appreciate uh, Council Delegate Key Allen Begay for uh, his efforts in joining us uh, this day to do food and supply distribution. The Phoenix Indian Center donation of last weekend uh, come in into the Navajo Nation and a lot of hygiene products uh, toilet paper, toothbrush, toothpaste, uh, bleach, uh, some canned foods. Uh, we delivered uh, to the citizens here in the most rural part of the Navajo Nation, the central part, uh, central uh, Navajo Nation. So, Binda Edle, Jehtez Ad, Eya Kon, Lane Hachin, Hik Edan Lenigi, Le Hosdo, the Kid Hatinigido. Phoenix Indian Center. So Pinda Inle Jetes Ad Low Mount Ado Kode Hostori Toho Yej uh Whipperwill. Adon Le Blue Gap Tachi Shin the Ad Kadeya uh Aden Hin da Kri. The <laughs> The Quila e the Cosentragi, the Dol Natu e in the Cadon Altos Bacadilla. So in das Kagi at the Nadin, Akon, Kedahuit, Inigi, the Nebiki, a Pacagon, Kedahuit, Inigijo, Sae, the Ne, or the Blagan Viki at the Kedahatia. Edo di Con Altos the Bacad, Nichikon, the Neb. Be so be con kedahui tinigi ede ya dinar sosta baka so on das kagi ya tessa da bediliagi e na 
دین اشلا دمیلیج هستخا نزد دین دوبا آ هستخا دین دو ناکی انلت آین دسکا تسد بدیلیا آر تسد بدیلیا گی ای دید خصنت خاگی ندال نت بدیل نگی ای یا پازیتیف دیش نگی ای یا دین دمیلیج دوبا آ سوست دین آشلا هنلت آوی کن یک اینی نه دید کسی نگی پیدا حالا آدو دین هیچ آ یک اینی نه هیچ آ دچت دنگی یا آشلا نزد دین دوبا آ دز دین دوبا آ ناکی هنلت آوی کن یک اینی نه دو کسی نگی بذار دچت دن ایشین دو بات صدیل زند ولش یک ایروش نه آن هیچ ای تلاشیت اه داد این دو دیگه دو کدوم به اکا نیت جهات واشنگتن نیه واشنگتن هز آج تو دی پسو آج دو نه دو بیریال اسیستنس دیش نیگی ای کدوم ای یا بلندسی نی دو ای به نشکن نیه که ای دان زنیگی باهد آج باهد رو باعی چو چه داد اینگی دی باه باه لنیگی یا کاسکیت داد داد اگی دو ट्रैक्टर डा डा एक बैक हो चुदा इन्हीं की जो ए पैस बाहल ए आज ए पैस ला बैका नेचर कौन ही वाशिंगटन हज आज आदो दी कुछ देख काट शनि की है नास्त ए नेस्ट टीम दो बा नाटीम सेपी इन्हें ए या دی بده دوز نگی انداستی کرد دو بده حالا ندید خوشن تغییر. سو ایدا کدوم نخالتن بچه دل؟ کدوم نخالتن یک ایدا اندلنگی؟ ای نتیم دو آدم دیده یکی دکویش ای یان یک ای نه دی دکوشن تغییر بده دوز نگی که دو بده حالا ند. چو کد ریتاس انداست کات نان. چو ای اینل تا ای ناست ای نزد دین دو ماه ناتین دو ماه تبی انلت آ خود آ ایا کد دستی دو آ دو به دهلون ده ای اون هیچ پیام زند داشت که داشت نه. سو دی آ کوی جه نه صورت نیه چه کندی آ دو آ اون هیچ پیام زند که ای نشی نیا خیلی ل. آ هرند دستو تادو دی کنچ یان دی نیگیا. این چی نخ؟ آن لیه غنده دست خانی که دو نالیه ها باه غندگون دو دانی چی نه؟ تو آد ای یا ده نه یا دی ماسک داد اگی نیه چی تو آن هزه داد کی دست خیا؟ خدا دو کاه داد نه؟ ای خود آ ای به هزانی سلی سو ایشی آن آن یه پیل زند و دل نگو خدا دو کاه زل اینگو دا آدو دی چرا بتو این دهو کاهده؟ ای دی شداش این آشخوانش که نشین به هز آنیت ایگوت آدو دی دو آنیت اتین داد دسکال ای یا دمو یجیه دادو دمو گن اخوت ای آهندن دسات خانچه دی نشینی کی باهت زدات اشک ایروش نه جو آشنا نزد دین دو با آن دز دین دو آن آکی که اینال آیا نیک نیک اینی هنر از آدای اتاجت دندی دکوسن تغییر نهست ایت آتا. سو ابنی نه ای کن اتادی نه نیک جو با دینی که آهنگان دسات خ دادی نه ای کن به یل که کن نیک نیک نات آین دن دنگی. آرش ای یا دا 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 دایست آنت جو ایشی تلا ای یا جهت دال که دو دال سوست با دال دل دو کم انجاد نه دی دمو یجیگونه دو دمو گونه. سو ای دو اونی که اونی که پیاز زند داد لش. با هند نگی ای آشنا دمیل یجی به سانل تا ای با هند دی تکی نخواه دل دار. سو ای دو اونی که پیاز زند داد لش. به نی نگی کنی که مسنی که چینی نل با هچو باشا ای بذار دید کسی تغییر دار نش نگی دار بچه کدوم نیست دادی نه جو هت آن دنی تیمش کی نشینی آدوق کدوم 
chapter houses in Daznella, a Chian da Yishni, to Haishi da Nosinigin da Yishni, or Joe Nichi Kodalne. Ado e ahagand and daso trado del to e nal naliabahagand in da creda do del chat. Niniki jo e nina put out a good date. Nanjo was Jadina Sneaky, oh, her yuk at ad de desk. Din dish cragi. Kujido, torchin the ahut ebeni nato ado ado aji nda kreda cheta di nishik eno slini di atin anda iho ya dada the mobis kaniya da mandaya da o ho yu chida kong e leha no bahane ash wanted to adadi ne e ahagan da so tado akuna ya bahagan. And as the legi to dash and shik enos lini. You know, we want to give you a overview of what's happening out there. Um, you know, we just recently got the CARES Act funding, six hundred million dollars. Eight billion dollars was allocated to five hundred and seventy-four tribes in all fifty states all across the country. Sixty percent of that eight billion dollars were finally released last week and 600 million dollars was our share of that aid 40 percent is still lingering out there we had to take the treasury department of treasury the federal government to task by um, filing in the courts to make sure that those dollars get out to Indian country. And I want to say thank you to all the other tribes who uh, filed a lawsuit against uh, Treasury because those dollars are allocated for U.S. citizens. And I've been saying all along that those monies are for, it's not a handout, it's not a freebie. It's to help United States citizens throughout the country get this, the needed supplies and the food to you know, combat this virus, to overcome this virus, or to just stay home. And that money never came to Indian country. And so we had to file a lawsuit against Treasury, and the judge supported us. And they said, you know, told Treasury you need to get the money out to the tribes. And we, re we just got that uh, a couple of weeks ago. And you know, now we're crazy. utilizing pay my rent for the rent for three years. You know, you can't for, do that. For um, what we need, the immediate needs. So there are still 40% of those dollars that have yet to go out to Native American communities throughout the country. And so we had a meeting with Treasury yesterday finding out more criteria. You know, we when we were doing the 60%, we had to give a lot of information to Treasury, the size of our population, the land base, how much dollars are being uh, uh, lost because of uh, the economic impact. And then, you know, with the 40%, they're asking almost the same questions again. And so it, it kind of gets frustrating. Of course, we have to continue to abide by those regulations. But uh, I think, uh, you know, people up in Washington, D.C. are set to, you know, give the money to their uh, Alaska Native corporations, these for-profit corporations, which is, we don't support. You know, land-wise, you know how big Alaska is, right? It's almost half the size of the United States of America. If it's going to be land size, that's a lot of money that's going to go to Alaska Native uh, corporations, these for-profit corporations. But the intent, the legislative intent, when our congressional delegations, O'Halloran, uh, our Ben Ray Lujan, uh, and Deb Holland, uh, and many others, our congressional delegation fought very hard to include that $8 uh, billion for tribes. And our senators, Senator McSally, Senator Heinrich, Senator Udall, uh, Senator Sinema, 
uh, all helping out. No, let's not forget the Utah congressional delegation helped each other out to put this package together so we can get monies to the tribes. And we appreciate them. And we want to say thank you to all those uh, congressional leaders, lawmakers, for including that. And when they were having that debate, uh, they were they intended when they approved this that it would go to tribal governments and that's what we're all many of us a super majority of the tribes throughout the country are steadfast in saying that yes it's supposed to go to the tribal people not, not for profit not the shareholders not alaska native corporations but for our, our navajo people and so that's where we're at ladies and gentlemen 40 percent. we don't know how much we're going to get we might get zero because it all goes up to Alaska. Who knows? But uh, we are um, fighting for our share of resources. And it's not handouts. It's our share of aid to help us fight this pandemic. You know, the United States citizens uh, seven, six, seven weeks ago already started using, utilizing these dollars to help in their emergency. But tribes had to wait until last week to get their money, their share. And so some of you that are viewing have said, well, why is it taking so long? We just didn't have the resources, ladies and gentlemen. We had to dig in our own pocket to bring $4 million out so that we can help get the needed personal protection equipment to our first responders. And there's a shortage throughout the country of PPEs. I wanna say thank you to all the uh, friends of the Navajo Nation. You got Hollywood uh, stars stepping up, Mark, Mark uh, Ruffalo, Sean Penn with CORE, uh, Ellen DeGeneres uh, with the help of uh, uh, Ali Young with uh, Protect the Secret, being the facilitator, you know, bringing in the needed uh, supplies and equipment. And there's a lot of donors, Coca-Cola, University of Arizona, San, Santa Cruz County Supervisor Bruce Bracker for bringing fresh fruits. The reason why we, we're getting fresh fruits to our community is we, we don't need another spike in another epidemic that's here on Navo. Diabetes is an epidemic in tribal communities. So a lot of these donations that are coming in, I, I, I appreciate it, but let's start bringing in healthier foods. There's a lot of junk food coming in to the Navajo Nation from various donors, various groups out there. You know, we don't want to have, after this pandemic is over, a big increase in diabetes in our people. See, people don't think like that. They just want to get whatever food is out there. And the other thing too, ladies and gentlemen, we are see seeing that some of the food that are coming in to the Navajo Nation, not all of it, are outdated. And so we're putting those aside and making sure that the, the, the foods that are dated, uh, that are on, uh, on dated, that we get there to the Navajo people. So we want healthier food. So those of you that are listening out there, we appreciate um, the donations coming in. Don't get me wrong. I appreciate, we appreciate it. Navajo people appreciate it. But let us work together to bring healthier foods to the Navajo Nation. And this should bring an, an awareness for all of us that we need to grow our own crops. Many of you, I've seen pictures saying, uh, President, Vice President, uh, we're uh, planning this season. Thank you so much. Uh, we're gonna see a lot of harvest during uh, September and October, August, yeah. And it's because of working together with your families because uh, children are at home, elders are at home. Here's an opportunity for a lot of intergenerational teaching uh, to go back and forth, you know, it's not just one way. It's not just the elders to the youth, but also to the youth that are elders. And many of you have done that. I, I've heard stories. Uh, one young lady has sent an email to us saying that, you know, that she's never been this close to her parents before because we're such in a fast paced society. And this pandemic really slowed everything down. And possibly reminded of us of us reminded us of what's important in our lives, and that's our family members, our culture, our teaching, our tradition, and our language. And I hope you all took this time to teach our younger generation about our way of life. 
and also you know the home homestead out there you have the opportunity now you have a little bit more time let's uh clean up uh, around the house but uh, let's keep these masks on and these gloves on because hint of virus is still around i hate to uh you know say scare any anybody out there but you know there are bugs still here uh, around us and we just recently re uh, got word that there's one hantavirus case here on the Navajo Nation, and it's it's that time. Hantavirus has been here every year now since not the uh, early 90s. So they tell you to wear masks, they tell you to wear gloves when you're cleaning, and to use Clorox. So, you know, abide by that. That's the same thing for COVID-19. Uh, keep that in mind while you're helping out each other out there. And then, you know, you learn a little bit more about taking care of uh, your livestock your your sheep your goats your cattle your horses you know and your pets i appreciate um the donation that's coming in from um phoenix indian center as well as um jolie uh, fisher um who's got some pet uh food coming to the navajo we forgot about our pets you know our pets are cheap our pets take care of us as well and uh the donations a check went to perina and flagstaff we got um dog food cat food for our pets through that donation for us including phoenix indianson so today like i said we're in uh low mountain whippoorwill we'll be in blue gap to touchy and then uh in our day in Noslini, uh cottonwood so i'm sorry it's a cottonwood and um you know be there uh, if you're able to um we are uh, are giving out this this these supplies cleaning supplies and food so that you can stay home and take care of your family let's take care of our family you, uh the past two days we've seen a decrease in covid positive and it's because of you ladies and gentlemen my people it's because of you listening and helping each other and holding people accountable to stay home these numbers are going down but you know what there are going to be some testing blitz that are happening today there's one at um tonalia uh and there was one in cameron you know where these are massive tests that are being given over hundreds of tests given so of course if you test a lot of people you're going to have positive cases so don't be alarmed so the, the information I got yesterday from the Navajo Department of Health uh, is that um, total tests that we have given to the Navajo people, 25,682 tests given. And that's the uh, Abbott tests, the ones that you get in within less than 15 minute results, and also the old uh, older tests that are um, swab tests. So there's a combination of those. Uh, negative tests, 19,964. Positive tests, 4,071. So from a day ago to yesterday evening, an increase of positive cases by 69. So that encourages us uh encourages everyone out there that you know it's flattening out we're praying and hoping for uh we also have 142 deaths here on navajo uh let's pray for those family members um you know we will um see them again you know many of our our, our people early on lost their lives you know and people were believers people that got the, the virus of course you all know we're, we're at a revival uh, camp meeting so those of you that uh, are of like faith you know we we recognize that we will one day see them again because they went home to god they went home to jesus and they're in the arms of jesus right now all these people and we will see them again the other thing that we're we're doing right now is starting to track recovery numbers and we're doing contact tracing. We just need more uh, staff and more volunteers to help because it's time consuming. 
You have to gather all this data. You have to do an investigation to find out where people are recovering at. And we're doing our very best to get those numbers because the Navajo people wanted us to get those numbers out there. So to as of yesterday evening at five at six o'clock, the the data that we received back, 928 people, 928 people have recovered from COVID-19. So if, you know, like I said, a sheep herder mentality, if there are 4,071 positive cases, you would think you would subtract 928 from that, but it just doesn't work that way in the epidemiology um, field, uh, 928. But I want you all to understand this, that we are testing aggressively. Ladies and gentlemen that are listening and viewing today, do you know that the Navajo Nation government, the Navajo Nation has tested more of its population than any of the 50 states throughout the country. That's why you have high numbers. I know everybody says per capita, Navajo has now got more than New York and New Jersey positive cases. So, okay, if we're using per capita, let's be fair. Let's also tell people that we are testing aggressively. You know, this past weekend, I heard Governor Cuomo of the state of New York say that he has tested a little bit over 7% of his population in the state of New York. That's great. That's high. That's one of the highest of all the 50 states throughout the country. But you want to know what Navajo's percentage is? 11.5%. Let that sink in, right? Seven, a little bit over 7%. New York total population. Here on Navajo, we have tested 11.5% of our population. We have tested more than anybody in this country. So those of you that are reporting and media that are watching us, let's report it fairly. We are number one in terms of testing throughout this country. And it's because of the help of the frontline workers at the Navajo Area Indian Health Services, our 638 facilities. Let's give them a shout out too. Winslow Indian Healthcare. Also, uh, NACA and Flagstaff. Over here, uh, Tuba City Regional Healthcare, uh, uh, Healthcare Corporation. Uh, let's not uh, forget Una Utah Navajo Health System. Say it's a medical center. Say Memorial. You know, all these healthcare facilities working together under this unified command structure that we started here on Navajo. That's why we're starting to bring in a lot more data and a lot more information to the unified command structure. The humanitarian effort, when I say humanitarian, that's what we're doing out there, getting the donations that come in, the food, the supplies, and quickly getting it out to our citizens because donors don't want to see these uh, their donations sitting somewhere for days. They want to see it being utilized right away, and that's what we're doing. Uh, with our team, getting that donations out so that people can get fed and start cleaning their homes and to take uh, better care of themselves out there. Um, and so all the people who are donating throughout the country financially and even food and supplies, thank you so much. You are the friends of the Navajo people. And I've said this in many interviews that the friends of the Navajo pe people have stepped up and that includes our very own Navajo citizens from all over the world. Half of our population live off the Navajo Nation. And many of them are doing well in whatever profession they are. So they're giving back and they're donating to help grandma, grandpa here on the Navajo Nation. So a lot of these donations are going to those most vulnerable population. The most vulnerable population, those that are in need of health care, uh, attention on a daily basis are elders and uh, those that are uh, special needs and of course uh, those that uh, are in need of 
these types of supplies because they don't have the means to purchase those. That's our focus now, ladies and gentlemen. I've seen some, uh, you know, not to criticize, I've seen some families that are coming to our uh, donation uh, events, distribution uh, events happening that um, are doing okay, which is fine. You know, don't get me wrong. They might not, they might fear going to the supermarket. That's why they're there. I mean, they might have jobs. You know, majority of our Navajo citizens uh, do work for the Navajo Nation government. And a majority of them are shelter in place at home. They're at home. And so even they need help. But if you have the means to take care of yourself or you're okay at home, please don't come to these distribution events. Let's make sure that our most needy uh, people, individuals, get those donations. I ask for uh, that with all due respect uh, for those that are donating here on the Navajo Nation. We have three alternative care sites that have been built. One in Shiprock, New Mexico at uh, Tsubiyaj Schools. The gymnasium got turned into a 40-bed uh, isolation and quarantine, a step-down clinic so that Northern Navajo Medical Center can free up some of their beds uh, and put some of their patients in there. The other is uh, uh, the other one is in Arizona in Chin Lee. That's a 50 bed in the community center. And the same thing for the Chin Lee Comprehensive Healthcare Center there, trying to get some of their patients to be housed in the gym there. There's one in Gallup. That's a 60 bed. They're working with Gallup Indian Medical Center and uh, RMCH and doing the same thing. There's criteria in place. But what we want to also do is that those that test positive and they do not want to go home because it's, you know, a lot of people living there, they would be able to stay at these three locations. And we're also looking at opening up hotels to do quarantine and isolations throughout the Navajo Nation. I know people are saying, why now? Why now? It's too late. You know, it, we have had uh, finally getting resources. You know, these two buildings in Chinle and Shiprock, they actually cost $4 million to build those two out. And FEMA has a criteria that says that 20%, 25% has to be paid by the government that gets this aid, this assistance. So $4 million, we Navajo Nation has to pay a $1 million. But let me just say that we are working hard with FEMA, Region 9, also with FEMA up in Washington, D.C., to try to get to a 90-10, meaning we only pay 10% of that cost. And maybe we even get uh, the assistance of the White House to cover the total cost. And that's what letter, that's what the, the letter that we sent Vice President Myron Leiser and myself signed and sent to Washington, D.C. And so there's a lot of behind the scenes happening here with the uh, monies that are coming in and also with meetings. We had a meeting with the governor of Arizona yesterday uh, and I just gave him a report of what's happening here on Navajo. Um, they also need to uh, assist in uh, doing a lot more testing. Now that I said that, you know, that it's going to increase. Obviously, if you do more testing, there's going to be more positive cases and negative cases. So just keep that in mind when you see spikes happen. We have tested 11.5% of our total population, 25,682 citizens have been tested. And we're trying to get as many people as uh, we can test. But those that are there at the hospital, if you go to the hospital, if you are not showing any symptoms, they will not test you. But if you need to get tested, go to these larger um, testing blitz, as they call it, 
you know, Cameron Tunnelia today, and we're going to get another 30,000 tests uh, of throughout uh, the duration of this emergency from the federal government. And that was through the help of Sean Penn and his uh, organization, CORE, to bring out more testing. And I know that there is news about false negatives, false positives, and we're addressing that. Sometimes you're going to have to test uh, a person more than twice, maybe more than once, really. But we track those numbers. It's not like someone gets tested somewhere here and they get a negative and then they go to Sholo or Phoenix, Flagstaff and get tested there. The epidemiology team goes by their uh, addresses. So if they're over here, here, that information will come back to the Navajo Nation. So it gets counted here. And, you know, we just need to also stay uh, cognizant of the needs of our Navajo people when it comes to testing. If we need to test those that are, um, are, are showing symptoms that are very sick, of course, we want them to get tested right away. But those of us that are healthy, we need to abide by social distancing, uh, wearing a mask, wearing gloves, or washing your hands with soap and water every chance you get. 30 to 40% of our Navajo people don't have running water. We're going to be addressing that through the $600 million. You know, I could talk a lot more about the $600 million, but we do have a bill. 0116. Can you remember that? At 116, 116, 0116-20 is a comprehensive legislation to address the immediate expenditure of the $600 million quickly so that we don't have to keep going to the council, get approvals and approvals and approvals. One bill should take care of all that so that we can waive laws. I mean, if we're going to build homes, right? small octagons, then we got to get home site leasing uh, regulations to be put aside. We got to get right-of-way clearances uh, approved quickly. We got to ask the federal government to include that if there is another uh, legislation for aid to the Navajo people. So th those are things that we're working on right now, ladies and gentlemen. Washington, <laughs> so, เออฮันเอ่อเลฮาดะฮาดะชิโตอินเทอร์เน็ตดะฮาลอนิกิฮันเน็ตโดนิกิเจกุดาลเน็ตดะยาเอ็นฮิสเปดะฮันอาโรค
اگر نمازی بگو ای هاگان بادا دوز نیش آدو آب بیدو اتخا اشکان تا چه دوز لیش تا دید آدو آب بیدو هاگان آب بگن ادهی لیش دوز لیش تو ای آجی که دا دوز لیش شو هت آه ای بانسی دا ایک کس کدو نات آنی نیت لنگیش که ناسی نی اوخ یو با هنه جو کون به به نیکی جاز چنده دیلی آرو ایدی آشی هست خان آل کلوشین که تینن دی ریدیو بیه دا بی نا هنه دوله نا که جن دا نشنه دین جن دا نشنه ای آن هست خان آل کلو ای خود آه بنا هو آه هنه آرو دی دا خود آه اینترنت بیه هنه نیکی جا کن دیلی هنه هلو سایه دانه دوشش به آن زندان ده دان شبانت از کس او دانن س. او خیلی با هنن دی آقایی چه با دخیل نه. نیک ای نیک نه دوی دوی اندان نیک نگی چه ای ایشی ای یا کدوم یه جو با اینش که داده. کدوم آشخوانه نیک ای نیک نه بچه آشنه داشت. دی کدوم دنگ اچه بی بیشتر که دو ایشی بند نهتن آرو بلگانه که چه دو بیشتر که آکو بلگانه که چه حجت زهای تا هیشی شد نهی کلینه دنک اچه یانش که نخود آرو دنک اچه نه حجت زیه کجی نخالشن ها هایش شی نه دا نه دا نیل اکنون در آنیل تو نیکی نخاصل ل نیت زن آبی نه دا دی نشیک ای داشتن نه you know we love you we appreciate you thank you for being on this town hall I'm gonna make my way to Blue Gap Touchy and maybe see some of you at Cottonwood uh uh this afternoon and we're doing our very best to get the supplies out uh if you don't need to go to the store don't go to the store ladies and gentlemen that's why we're doing this you know it's not about recognition it's about the health and well-being of our navajo people you know if i didn't have the heart for the navajo people i wouldn't be here i love you i appreciate you that's why i'm out here even though this bug can sneak up on any of us out there. We wear our protection equipment. We wear our, our, our gowns when we're out there. We try to protect ourselves because we want you to live a long and healthy life. That's why we're doing this, ladies and gentlemen. And if you don't agree with what we're doing, then get off our Facebook page and don't comment on it. I call it the keyboard warriors. You're sitting in your cave right now doing these negative comments. If you want to be helping people, then come out and help those that are on the front lines by telling the people to stay home. Encourage each other. Don't bring each other down. I hear that all on the internet, even with religion. Stop that. We all have different beliefs. We should all recognize and respect each other's way of life, teaching, and belief. That's how our ancestors survived 150 plus years ago, going on this long walk to Fort Sumner. I'm sure there were some complainers. I'm sure there were people that were saying, those leaders, don't know what the heck they're doing but you know what those leaders at that time brought us all the way back to our homelands here and now we see them as one of the most uh influential leaders of all times we have those leaders here today ladies and gentlemen we are utilizing our limited resources that we have here on navajo and People are asking for the Navajo Nation to shut down. Government shouldn't be doing that. It's on us. I've gotten emails saying my cousin 
uh, ran away to Albuquerque and he came back and he's sick now. I even got emails saying my uncle's not listening, running around out there and going to the store. Those types of emails and, and they're wanting me, the president, to do something about it. Let me just say it's up to all of us. It's up to you as well. Put your foots down. Put your feet down and take back your household. Moms and dads, grandmas and grandpas and Nelly. It is now time for us to take back our Navajo Nation. And by working together, we can take COVID-19 off our nation and come back to some normalcy. And we will see the next generation after us. They're not going to say, oh, that time of COVID-19, that scary time. They won't remember it, but they'll remember as a time. That's when I got really close with my mom and dad, my grandma, grandpa. That was the time when I went out and heard sheep for three months. That was the time we came together and we planted during that time. And to strengthen our families, ladies and gentlemen. And that's why I say... I believe in us. I believe in all of us. And we always say the Nebetzi, Navajo strong. God bless you. God bless our great Navajo nation. So thank you, Vice President. Uh, I'll turn it back over to you and all the presenters there back in Winter Rock as I make my way to the other communities. We love you. Thank you. Yat <laughs> It's good to be with you all. Vice President Myron Liza here in Yenishia. Comanche Nishla, Tolhana, Basis Chin, Auto, Comanche Dashiche, Klashti Dashanelli. It's good to be with you all this morning on this important town hall. As you know, this is how President and uh, I give out information and also our cabinet. And uh, from time to time, we've had our, our council delegate members with us uh, uh, to give the updates and be a part of uh, what leadership is doing. So we thank you one and all. And, uh, Wow, our President Nez has given a uh, great timely uh, talk to the people from the heart. Amen, amen. As we know, who doubts our President's heart for the Navajo people, right? At this point, if you haven't seen it up to then, then uh, I don't know. You know, we, we need to do a, a, a check, a reality check on, on all of us. So I uh, appreciate President. His leadership has been exemplary and his leading a nation, you know. All of us, we uh, have to follow uh, what leadership is saying. And as we get steered out of this pandemic, you know, what is that going to look like? And so I'm going to give some updates on the business and reopening our economy. And prayerfully, President and I, we're praying for a downward trend, as we have he heard from all of our states. As you know, Arizona, New Mexico, and Utah are contemplating and have already opened up their economies. They've loosened the restrictions that uh, guard our public from this COVID-19 virus. And at that, you know, we, ha we don't need to be reminded that this virus is deadly. And from the highest levels, we advocate, you know, leadership, when we talk and deliver messages, sometimes, especially in this regard, to keep our people safe, we've had to exaggerate our methods. We've had to exaggerate the messages that we sent out and lead by example. And so we certainly appreciate President Nez out in the hot zones, if you will, along with our uh, uh, OPVP staff uh, assisting and helping deliver out needed care packages, uh, food boxes, and, and just general goodwill. And so the heart of the nation is uh, at, at, right at your, uh, your, your beck and call. And so be in prayer for them, Shadina. Be in prayer for your, your leadership that are out there. I just want to bring uh, some updates here uh, as we prayerfully consider uh, any downward trend, looking for any semblance of continued downward numbers. Yesterday, we had 69 new positive tests, which is good. It's encouraging. As you know, the day before, we had 140 and as well into the three digits. And so any day we can get in double digits, we're, we're saying that was a great day. And so, uh, as you know, President has said too, just like any economy that's considering opening, they're doing massive testing. Uh, the states of Arizona and New Mexico and Utah are doing their testing blitzes. And so we would see increased numbers because we're trying to locate those that are positive, maybe asymptomatic, uh, you know, in their uh, display of any uh, um, symptoms and uh, not showing real sickness, but still carrying the virus. 
the need to weed these out and make sure that they're isolated and they're taken off of the streets, you know, willingly, hopefully they don't want to infect others. And so we need to make sure that that uh, leadership is about that along with our health professionals. And so the need for escalated testing, and certainly these numbers are showing that, 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 that we're receiving 4,071 total positive cases here on Navo as of yesterday. And so today, a little bit later on, in a few more uh, hours, we'll get our updated numbers. And so prayerfully, again, praying for that downward trend because we want to open up our economies. And then we also have 142 deaths here of our beloved Diné people, our family members, our loved ones, our elders, even our young ones as well. And so we, d we know one is too many, but to have 142, well... That's why President and I do what we do as leaders of the Navajo Nation, wishing that our people would listen to this vital message to stay home, stay safe, and save lives. And certainly, we advocate and pray for our frontline people, all of our nurses in harm's way, our doctors and technicians, our epidemiologists, those that are helping us uh, decipher this information, this important information. And so also our EMTs, our frontline and our public safety, all those that are in harm's way, as you know, they're tired, they're worn out and our numbers are depleted. And so as we consider opening again, you know, we need to consider them as well. And so we need all this data and uh, we need to open up our economy as well, but not at the risk of endangering the lives of many more. And so we do that. And so our plight here is um, our lack of a strong economy, right? Uh, is our lack of storefronts. We know our people readily drive two to three hours to go to their nearest border town where they can find the big boxes, where they can find all of the uh, necessities, uh, even uh, some uh, uh, you know uh, non-essential items like uh, movie houses, right? I don't know if they're open yet, but our people are trained. We've been doing this for months. We've been doing this for years, taking our families out to the border towns and enjoying a time, maybe even spending a few days there, right, in the hotels. And so as we come out of this COVID-19 pandemic, what is our new reality going to look like? Well, it would be great if we could reopen our economies, that we would be opening at a higher level, right? It would be nice that we would look uh, open our, our, our economies at a better level. But that's our great hope right now as leaders. What can that better level look like? And so we plan, along with uh, utilizing some of this uh, $600 million that our nation has been given uh, through the CARES Act. The CARES Act is our uh, uh, coronas, Coronavirus Aid Relief and um, Sec Economic Security Act. So we're thankful for it. We're appreciative of it. What can a nation do with $600 million? Certainly, we can't, uh, you know, uh, I guess, uh, uh, enhance our quality of life to a point where, uh, you know, uh, it, it'll cover all the, the decades and maybe even century-long uh, lack of uh, funding coming to our nation to provide quality health care, to provide a high education, to provide all of those things that the rest of North America enjoys. Certainly, the rest of the United States enjoys. It's, it's a drop in a bucket, but you know what? We're going to use that. And we're going to bolster our fight against COVID-19. All of our, our, our uh, expenditures to this point, our president was talking about how that formula was talked about and how, you know, we looked at the population or the membership of a tribe and we looked at the land base of a tribe and we looked at the number of employees that the tribe has. And then we looked at the, uh, you know, the number of, uh, of or the amount of uh, expenditures that was already expended to fight this COVID-19. And so our, our Department of Treasury and our Department of uh, Interior have looked at all that. And so what is the next 40%? look like when we come down well they've stipulated that uh, it's going to look at the number of employees a tribe has and they're also going to look at uh the um um uh, number of uh, the amount of expenditures so certainly we've got a lot of expenditures and we certainly got over seven to eight thousand employees so those numbers should look well for navajo and we prayerfully not that we're greedy, we're just saying we need to recoup a lot to uh, get up to where we need to be, and we're certainly going to need uh, th this money here to help us uh, gain ground in this fight against COVID-19 and prepare for the next virus and whatever that may look like. It may even be deadlier, right? 
And so we need to be well-trained. We need to be disciplined. And that's what this leadership has been all about, telling people to stay home, stay safe, save lives, keep your mask on, clean. And if you don't have water, well, we're going to work along with our uh, council delegates and our leadership here at Navajo to let's bolster our water. Let's drill more wells. Let's bring water to those homes that don't have water. That's what we're about. And that's what we're needing your prayers for, Shadana, if you would join us in this fight here. And so what would our economic restart look like? You know, I mentioned the, the testing blitzes that are already going on in the states of Utah, New Mexico, and uh, Arizona. And again, these are being done so that their economies can be open. President and I are, are not so quick to be opening up our economy, even though it's needed, even though our stores need to be open, even though you know we need to be about uh, uh, getting on the business, but not at the risk, again, of many more souls, many more lives here on Navajo. And so... I'm going to speak to the small business section, the entrepreneurs of the great Navajo Nation that are out there. Some of you have taken advantage of the PPE that was, I'm sorry, the PPP, uh, the Paycheck Protection Program that's been given out. A lot of our businesses have uh, uh, got bolstered with uh, funding from that. There's also the economic injury disaster loans that are out there. How many of you are aware and looking at these here if you're in business for yourself? And if you have employees, the EIDL, much touted here. Uh, there's also emergency grants that are available and business debt relief that's going on. $10,000, you know, for six months, it's on the books. And then six months, it's forgiven. Wow, $10,000 to your business. And then lastly, uh, those of you out there in uh, cyberspace, Cyberland here, uh, have, no, remember that uh, Second Lady Dottie Lizer and myself were invited to uh, President Trump's visit to the Honeywell plant there in Phoenix, Arizona, when he toured the plant that is uh, going to be making 20 million masks, 3M is, in their two plants, one in Phoenix and one in Rhode Island. But they're going to be responsible for pumping out 20,000 masks a month. Wow. We need to bring some of that productivity to Navajo, and that's what we are there for. We've been in talks with Governor Gary, uh, Governor Ducey uh, about bringing the serendipitous uh, spillover uh, when they're talking about re reestablishing their economy in Arizona. As you know, it was robust. It was hitting on all cylinders, and this pandemic happened, and so they're about recouping that or they're about reestablishing the momentum into uh restarting their economy and so we as a the Navajo nation we want to be a part of that and i keep i went and i will continue to challenge governor ducey to think about navajo and indian country when the opportunities come you know i could go on and on there i get really get excited those of you who know me uh when we were there in, in, uh, with President Trump and uh, the members that were there, uh, the uh, Secretary of the Department of Labor was there, Secretary Scalise, and we talked with him along with some of the White House staff there. And he said that the uh, Indian country is really not taking advantage of the dislocated workers program. And so those of you out there that are listening, uh, please invest some time in looking into the dislocated workers program program if you're a business if you're an employee look at this and see if it uh, uh, has any uh, holding in it with you can you take advantage of this and again i was told by secretary scalise that um, uh, indian country really isn't taking advantage of the, the dislocated workers program so if you know there's money there's money out there please do your diligence uh, leave no stone unturned to these grant opportunities these funding opportunities i tell you we need a lot to bring ourselves back up again what i said earlier about wouldn't it be great if we reopened our economy at a higher level we're not there yet but we can certainly aspire to doing so and that's in a future time so that's the vision that this administration has is getting us to a point where our economy's strong and we have a tax uh, uh, revenue that's being generated that's feeding other opportunities other entrepreneurs other dreams of people of our people and as many of our professionals come home there'll be more opportunity and then they'll be buying local and so you can see how it's a snowball effect here and i i certainly understand that and i've been saying that for years it's just that you know i didn't have maybe a large enough platform and so now as the vice president i'm able to say buy navajo buy local shadina we all win if our, our one boat rises guess what when high tide comes in our all of our boats will rise and so certainly that's an illustration that you all would understand there and so 
I also want to uh, talk about donations here. Um, our Attorney General Doreen McFall isn't available, but uh, to date, as of May 18th, the nation has received $4.2 million in, in funding and donations. And we, plus, a lo along with uh, our beloved uh, Navajo Housing Authority, their offer of $1 million. And so I guess and for all intents and purposes, we have $5.2 million of donations that have been raised here. Plus, we've also had and received tons and tons of non-monetary donations that has come in the form of truckloads of water, truckloads of bottled water, truckloads of pallets of food, of rice, of potatoes, of beans, of canned goods, all the non-perishables, and then also dog food and, uh, and feed for our animals. And so these are greatly, greatly appreciated. That's just showing that when calamity comes, when hardship comes, that the hearts of many think, how can we be a blessing? How can we help? Even small checks I've seen as we get the confirmation in our emails, small check, $25, $30. Those touch me more than the truckloads. Somebody's been given... Somebody's thought enough of the Navajo Nation to give what they could give. And certainly we remember all those that are putting themselves in harm's way and giving of themselves and risking even lives with their families to uh, help others. That's awesome. That's golden. It's love. Our president talked about, if you don't think he has a heart for the people, you know, what else are you going to say? And so love also says stay home, stay safe, save lives. Love stays home, and not wanting to continue to uh, be a part of the numbers that would get infected and, and, and put it out there for the people. So love comes in the form of many ways, and certainly we've been one of those administrations that, that talk about that. You know what? After this world goes away, after uh, you know, it's all said and done, it's all going to be hay, wood, and stubble. It's going to dry up and blow away and burn up, and all that we're going to be left with is love mercy and grace and certainly our faith here is uh, the the nations first nations people here creator put us here for a reason we said that our prayers are powerful and so as we pray for one another i believe that god can show us the power that we have in unity and the power that love has because love is the only thing that's going to last after it's all said and done love 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 i love you shadana our president is certainly out there displaying and walking the, the, the talk and talking the walk that, that he loves his people. Otherwise, he wouldn't be out there. So we thank him for his leadership again. And so lastly, um, I didn't plan on getting and going on this year. You know, when you follow a tough act like the president and everything that he says, he steals all the good things to say and I'm left with crumbs. <laughs> I say that jokingly, not critically. Uh, certainly as the vice president, I, I do have my gifts, I do have my holdings, and I do have uh, my experiences. And as a former pastor, I certainly do do that. Uh, we're praying for you daily, nightly. We pray for all of our people. We pray for the safety of those that are out there delivering care packages and delivering much needed food. And I pray for the messages that th those uh, acts of care will give. Prepare the hearts of the people. Soften our hearts, Lord. Let us be a nation, Lord, that is uh, seeking you, that is, looks to you, that is thankful for every good thing that comes from above, the Father of lights. And so we thank you again. So I want to thank you for this time here. Uh, covered a lot of things and uh, praying for our businesses here. What is our economy going to look like when we come out of it? And so as we open up, let's recover safely. And certainly President Jonathan Nez and the First Lady Fafilia and uh, Vice President Liza here, myself, and uh, Second Lady Dottie, we are praying for us. What is our new life going to look like? Our new norm. It's going to be an abnormal time as we go. But you know what? Let's come out of this change for the better. As we know, any hardship is designed to prevent, uh, design in us perseverance and longing for prayer. Because guess what? It's not about us. It's about others. It's about thinking of others more highly than we ought to. And so we thank you again. Thank our creator. Praise the Lord. And so um, I'm going to uh, pass it on now to our um, uh, the division director, Dr. 
Pearl Yellowman as she gives us an update on what her work has been doing. And I want to thank her too as well. Her leadership in leading the community development is a lot. She has 110 chapters in which to uh, be responsible for. And she works with all of you all. And she does it diligently. She does it prayerfully. And she does it too with a lot of uh, question. You know, sometimes a negative word comes and we try not to dwell on it. And so all we can do is just Give it to the Lord and pray. And so we thank you again. So if, uh, if I could pass this on to uh, uh, Dr. Yellowman, you are up next. And so God bless you, Shedene. God bless the Navajo Nation and God bless America. Shalom. Um, Shay, Miss Yellowman, Pearl Yellowman, and Shay Otto, and Shlini Gate, Send out Bithley and Shlendo, Lizathana Bushes Chain, Toba Honda Shiche, Otto, Hanawan Nate Shandale, and Lay Tuninus, Desard and Nasha. Otto, I just want to say thank you to our leadership. I hear had President Jonathan Nez, Vice President Lizer. Auto base base on. And uh, the cabinet members of um, the Nez Lizer administration who have been working diligently throughout the COVID uh, relief efforts. I'd also like to say thank you to our, our first responders and to our police officers and medical staff um, who are serving the people of the Navajo Nation. <clears throat> I work for the Division of Community Development and we work closely with the 110 chapters. I just want to share uh, in this particular town hall um, two items <clears throat> that, are, that we are moving forward on and they're particularly important to the chapters, to the 110 chapters. One is um, a Division of Community Development will be working closely with the 110 chapters on a FEMA recovery plan um, to help uh, and, and assist with the chapters on capturing the expedited amount or the expenditures <clears throat> that have been um, uh, spent on COVID relief efforts uh, for the last two months and um, look to uh, working with ASC and our SPPS staff uh, along with FEMA and FEMA reps on a rollout plan that will be addressing the FEMA ex expenditure and recovery plan. As we all know that 110 chapters <clears throat> have all been working <clears throat> in various capacities to serve their local communities. And we want to capture that. We've had some communities and some chapters um, <clears throat> uh, deliver food, drive out to elders. We had some chapters uh, recruit volunteers, host safety trainings, utilize their chapters as a staging post, and a point of distribution. We've had some chapters <clears throat> rent or utilize heavy equipment um, to assist community members. So we want to um, uh, ensure that we follow the FEMA guidelines and produce a plan that allows for chapters to fully capture uh, all of those expenses and resources that they utilized. So look, look to uh, receive some information shortly on that. <laughs> the other thing I want to share is that <clears throat> I know President Nez and Vice President uh, Lizer have mentioned this earlier, um, but the 
Navajo Nation government is um, possibly scheduled or potentially scheduled to reopen June 8th. And we um, have uh, been working on a reopening phase one for the chapters, the 110 chapters. Currently, the 110 chapters are on a minimal schedule <clears throat> and are providing government essential services. And um, so when we start to look at what reopening and a reopening phase one would look like for the 110 chapters, for example, this is just an example. If a chapter has four staff and they open for 20 hours a week, um, <clears throat> we have to look at what is their burn rate for gloves and masks, um, how much education is required to be open at 20 hours a week, how much signage and communication must um, coexist with the phase one of reopening. Uh, many of our elders come in. Um, how can we ensure that our chapters are a safe place for our elders um, as they come in and start to utilize the chapter and the chapter compound or the campus? So <clears throat> it, there's quite a bit to um, include in our phase one uh, of the reopening. And not to mention, what does a phase two look like? That's 40 hours and beyond. Um, how much resources will we be utilizing then as far as gloves and PPEs and masks, et cetera? Um, and how do we be smart about it? 110 chapters is a significant population to the Navajo Nation. And <clears throat> that, is that is opening the hubs of each community throughout the Navajo Nation. And how do we do that in a safe manner? How do we do that in, uh, in a safe way that keeps both chapter officials, chapter staff, and community members safe? What supplies are needed? Um, <clears throat> how might we alter uh, entrances and exits so that people can be safe? So it's a tremendous task and a tremendous uh, responsibility of, of initiating the conversation of reopening. Now, mind you, I am aware that many chapters right now, again, are, are operating at a, um, at a minimal amount, <clears throat> but they are providing these essential government services. And there's so much... There's so much local governance and business and interaction that occurs at the chapter house and the chapter level. So how do we go back to that, those large amounts of interaction but in a safe way? Earlier on a different call, I shared that we have to learn how to live in this new way of mitigating <laughs> And we have to learn to live in this new way of <clears throat> um, precautions. We, can, we have to be disciplined. We have to continue to be disciplined in our behaviors. And that's what mitigation is. It is um, adjusting our behavior to uh, be safer. It's adjusting our behavior and our thinking to keep others safe as well. So uh, look look to uh, the near future for both um, the reopening phases and language for that at the chapter level and also look for um, the FEMA recovery plan that I'm thankful that we have partners. As you may have heard, we have expanded into the uniform command structure and we have the presence of FEMA assisting us. Um, we still have plenty of training to do and we have training to share with chapter officials and chapter staff so that we are <clears throat> consistent in the communication and messaging of receiving knowledge of how to move forward on these recovery plans. Um, so I'm thankful that we have FEMA representatives here 
to assist us. Our goal is to be of service DCD. Our goal is to be of technical assistance to the chapters during this process. Um, like we, like I've shared earlier, we have seen many chapters um, uh, provide uh, services during COVID relief efforts, and we want to assist in helping each of those chapters capture what is eligible. <clears throat> that is a key term, what is eligible. Many things that we have observed and witnessed so far can be eligible, but there are some technical terms that we have to be aware of and made, made uh, informed of as to what is ineligible and what can be captured and not captured. Um, but to, best, to the best of my knowledge, I'm proud to say that many of the chapters have been pre performing and delivering services and COVID relief efforts in um, what is um, wh which should be captured and eligible. So I want to keep that short today. Um, as mentioned earlier as well, uh, one last thing in my closing is that we have um, progressed into a humanitarian effort. Um, that is also a large task. And to streamline <clears throat> to streamline the incoming donations, to streamline um, communication with the chapters, and to adjust the chapter need through the humanitarian efforts and donations, uh, working closely with the Division of Community Development and the chapter branches. There's multiple wheels, so to speak turning and spinning uh, within that process alone. As you may have heard earlier, that donations come in all forms. Um, and our task is to uh, receive then inventory and then distribute in a equitable manner or in a manner that meets the demands of those high risk and um, and that that in itself is a is a challenging task, and I am very proud of the efforts thus far. <clears throat> but again, that's a top priority of the health command currently right now for the community and the chapter branch is making sure that we are assisting and working with the chapters in identify in identifying families in need, elders in need, hard to reach and. And I mean geographically hard to reach. We have community members that live uh, 20, 30 miles off the main highway where you need a reliable, reliable vehicle to get to. Um, not to mention we have families, families um, that are in clusters testing positive. And we need to provide immediate assistance to those families so that they can recover that they can heal and that they can um, do so in a manner where they are uh, giving less exposure to those around them. So <clears throat> we're still working very hard. Many people are working long hours. We have a lot of staff still working and we're proud of the staff proud of um, all the frontline people, proud of our leadership. Um, nobody is giving up. Nobody is, um, uh, we're, we're just, hit, we're, we've been here serving, serving the people. And we're a strong nation and strong people. And uh, just in closing here, um, I know maybe this was shared earlier, <laughs> But we have graduations. We have babies graduating from, from Head Start, which would have been their Head Start graduation, all the way to college. And what I've learned in my years of going to school is <clears throat> I've been a lifelong learner. And although I graduated from college several years ago, I continue to learn every day. And learning does not end. And every day we learn something. We learn something new about ourselves. We learn something new about our surrounding, our our environment. We learn something new about our loved ones. And we learn something new about our community. 
and yeah, I learned to I learned to love learning. That wasn't always the case for me in 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 maybe middle school, junior high, but I now accept the challenge of learning every day, and I feel fulfilled in that way. And so, want to extend my congratulations to graduates out there, all the way from the little Head Start babies to college students and beyond. May we all be lifelong learners here. May we all be. Um, may we all seek the love of learning every day and learning from each other. So, take care. And um, uh, appreciate this time. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, this is Dave Nance from the Command Center. Akihe, Anasko Ari Daisotsagi, Ado Koto, Robert and Dash Nishigi. Federal agencies, federal emergency management. Federal Health Department, Health Services, our own national car said all the cones in the house. I think they go on does the old, the quick ocean on the shadow. They think it's so cold, which is a little area in the illness. A cordy, uh, um, federal emergency manager, uh, management, the shinigi, um, the quick ocean did me hit a horn as dado, could they go area, and he caught a notch, the way, um, he caught so do she did. She has auto incident manager, uh, uh, incident commander, Hatnanigi, just shut up Kodota. I seen Red and Ray with that incident management, the Nishigi Kotego, a Shato, Nishestago, a Kodota, and Nishigi, the deal in a gate, or take away, been on Tindo or a Joe Hut, Ado Kodoya, what this Ago in any way. Um, Section uh, chief of the Nego Eco Nitaho, I thought in Hina Hans Tado, but Sando at the wheel, Aro, but they go and she holds this. Accord on the she sit on Linigay age or eighty coche. Um, COVID nineteen, Nit Files, Nehiki, Ilahalet, all the Aya AP, uh, Yahota de Lisho and Laho, now on its age, that the doll doctor, you see, Nishina Nashatil. Accord. Then the rage to a large again, I'll call. I wrote on his door, when he yet is a little yaho. So he are the shay, ya, a tata, not all she, a ado, a covert testing, could ego shay, a tan hit the net or she, ado, a pen, pen, peta yozi. Others are me, a ya, a sisas be hollow. So, so what a hot in for a ya, a ado, a ya. Satan hit it laughed all this in Hayden the Razor, Hayden Bernard, all Nahadi, but a quay a da saha in the town the day ya a good ego. And please be hold on way a hashin el tego way a zail ero a young way could ego a nasshole just old Joe Hut. I don't hot ego a nehose and no a ya a jo in the car again on contact tracing but then. Kaila ya ye de ke e kotego. Bishnahsun net or tagoe ya bishkatina az or tagoe bishnshin nish. So tego in I de kitigi but not ja e in a hate the dazi. A so dazi but not all nagi he you see in the yard. A co edo edo ajat net or tago sand or tago chin. So then again, the idea is that the banana is a hashin, that is the quiz card. I don't know that all the class don't know the COVID test is not so old. Nice go. I got a go go go. Yeah. Ah, any positive go. Yeah, yeah. 
あの、こちらのレイソーシャルサービスと、ちょうど え、どうだ、あ、で、あ、で、あ、で、あ、で、あ、で、あ、で、あ、で、あ、で、あ、で、あ、で、あ、で、あ、で、あ、で、あ、で、あ、で、あ、で、あ、で、あ、で、あ、
Executive Director Kradi Navajo Department of Health Kradi on Dysnos Ongi Kraiti had non Kadini Donan D Kradi non um D the more dot the more Yajiko Shin dot the Kra non curfew no hat needle A D Chin Kradi is called the Abe best at the Dos Neto Kradi and he's beyond a dot and die Dos Neto taught about any a hot ashing day um Kradi ペキオリニクアディエナデヤゴエクアディアンバスタドノテドアドディクアディトコスンサギナスナスエトアドハリエニギエアティデゴイチェティクシンテネタダスデドデスナトクシンインテニナヘナハスケトクアディアシモデタ
Although for the listeners that are out there, I'm just going to repeat some of this in English. Just want to let everyone know that to continue prevention on a daily basis, washing your hands, practicing social distancing um, everywhere you're at, where you're grocery shopping, either when you're at home or in your workplace or other places and continuing to adhere to public health orders such as wearing a cloth mask or some preventive measures also when um, being aware of staying away from sick people as well. And also I'm um, reminding people that if you're sick and you have flu, if you have flu-like symptoms, make sure you stay at home in a separate location from family members um, as much as possible until your symptoms are over. And if there are um, symptoms are, that are related to COVID-19 that are, um, that are increasing or are not going away or getting worse, obviously try to seek medical care as much as possible. Also, if there is another curfew that will happen, we'll make sure that you're prepared with food and water and basic needs as we're trying to stop the spread of COVID-19. And by doing so, we're asking everyone to stay home and make sure um, that there is um, you, that there is less mobilizing across the Navajo Nation. So staying at home um, decreases your risk of exposure. That's the reason why we tell everyone to stay at home. By staying home, you're not in human contact. You're not um, in areas where you're increasing your risk, such as at restaurants, gas pumps, around getting food. Any kind of risk is out there at this point. Um, I would say that Navajo Nation is a very, it's a hot spot right now. So that's why we will encourage your participation and cooperation in following the curfews and the public health orders to um, decrease and, and combat this disease that has, that is not really going away right now. And that means that we would need to follow and comply with the public health orders so I just want to encourage the listeners to um, practice um, all of those preventive measures. And if you're sick, I mean, by all means, we're not asking you to stay home. Make sure you get medical attention if you have to go to the hospital. We do um, on, we are um, working on case management and contact tracing, as I mentioned earlier, or other individuals have mentioned. So um, we look forward to working with um, families that need assistance continue to contact the hotline. Otherwise, um, I appreciate every, everyone on the phone call and all the listeners. From the Navajo Nation Command Center, we just encourage everyone to stay safe, to save lives.